So today we're going to do a brief overview of the National Weather Service Enhanced Data Display, uh, version 4.4 is the current version. Uh, there's a map here which acts like a Google map. You can pan it around, you can zoom in to different spots. You can also hold the shift key down and click and drag to get a zoom box which will zoom you to that box. In the upper left hand corner there's an interface option that allows you to simplify the interface if you want. By default I display everything but you can take it down to say like the basic version which cuts out a lot of the extra clutter in the interface. But I'm going to keep it on advanced for this demonstration. And in the left hand corner here you have quick layers and all these have um, buttons over here which allow you to add them if you click on the green button. And when that happens, it adds that layer to the map. And in this case, it's radar. And we have a nice uh, snowstorm up here in the northeast. I can come down to the center part, the bottom part of the map here, and click on a state overlay to quickly overlay kind of a state boundary layer that allows me to see where I'm at. Some of the options over here allow you to, um, when you click on the green button, it displays a panel that allows you to do more things such as control looping options and once you click on the play it'll go and fetch all the server radar images and loop them. You can see the time here and you can also get a legend up here and that shows you the reflectivity. Now the other thing that you may be interested in is say what's happening on the ground such as storm reports. So if you click on the bottom button down here and say show the last 12 hours of reports you'll see that these are the reports that this weather service office has collected. You can also filter these values by saying only show me the reports of say wind greater than 60 miles per hour and those are those reports so you can see it's pretty windy day out here. You can also get rid of the icons if you just want to see the values. And if you don't want color or them to be sized appropriately so they're all the same size, you can check off these other options. Now I'll come back up here and show you another really common layer. That's uh, the hazard layer. So the hazard layer, when you click on that, it displays all the hazards on the map. And you can also throw the text of the hazards and you can also filter the hazards, say if you only want to see the severity, only the warnings out there, or only the advisories. There's a hundred different ways to slice and dice them. You can filter them by group, so you can only show, say, the temperature group, which there's nothing out there, but you might want the wind group. There's all the wind type warnings. When we mouse over them, it highlights which one it is, tells you the population impacted by these warnings and when they end and when they are issued. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with this, um, a lot of options to play around up here to change the colors to a five color scheme rather than the 120 some color scheme. Um, you can throw on when they're valid to and change the size as well. And this little guy over here tells you how old they are. And this one tells you how many people have been impacted by the, each different type of warning or watcher advisory. So that's a pretty nifty layer. And so that kind of gives you a, a general feel for how to use the quick layers. You toggle them on and off. And once they're on, you can do different things, such as this button right here will change the opacity of that layer. Let's move to one that's loaded. So, you know, drag it to the left or right will change the opacity. That's what these guys right here do. And there's a whole bunch of different uh, other options under the quick layers. But one that you may really want to investigate is the more layers. If you click on that, it opens up a whole box of potential um, layers down here. And you can search these layers. So if you want to look up, say, anything related to snowfall, you can show, say, this 24-hour snowfall contours. And it'll go out there and it should plot on the map any snow that's occurred in the last 24 hours. Now, this all of this site is internet connection dependent. So as you can see right now, my internet connection is kind of slowed down a bit just because the general map isn't loading. 
but when you do finally get the feed coming in, it will um, display those that data. And again, everything's kind of up in the map section. I'm going to get rid of that legend. So there's the 24-hour snowfall contours. And it might be a little hard to see because now the states are behind uh, this layer. You can go up to the toolbox up here and you can click on the layer manager. There's a whole bunch of other options up here, but I'm just going to focus on this right now. And you can come in here and say, I want to see those states on top. So I'm going to take that layer and I'm going to move it to the top. It makes for a much prettier picture. And then you can drag and drop these things to set their order too. And if you have a bunch of them, that's where this, this feature is really handy. Um, another really popular um, part of this interface is the ability to get a forecast from one point to another. So for instance, I could set a travel forecast for Augusta, Maine, and I'm going to go down to, say, Harrisburg, Virginia today. And if I right-click on the map, I can set those start and end points. And what it does is it'll route that forecast based on the time that you arrive at a specific location. And as you go along, it plots that according to this color scale, where purple's extreme hazards such as blizzard, ice storm, or high wind warnings. And since we have that giant storm out there in the northeast, that's uh, what you're seeing here. So it's not recommended that you do much travel on this day. Uh, as you can see, there's a whole slew of hazards out there, from ice to snow, fog, and wind. And this is looking at our forecasted weather grids again. So lots of information there. Um, and Again, you can get to that feature either by right-clicking on the map or by clicking on this little icon up here or by switching your interface over here to the travel version, which will also pop this up and keep it very simple. And then you can also type in here your start and end points and you can save routes for later, change what date you leave on, um, and what displays on the icons and so on and so forth. So. That's another nifty feature. And finally, there's a lot of background options in here. So if you don't like the typical background maps for most places, you can switch it to something of your choice. And any of the Google ones do have a traffic layer. So if you click on the traffic, you can see um, it's just how traffic is uh, behaving in the areas. And of course, up here, since it's a blizzard, it's either really slow or it's not even reporting. So Basically, there's not a whole lot going on up there as far as travel-wise. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, finally, what most people are looking for when they do come to a map is what's the forecast? Well, you can click on a specific location anywhere on the map. Uh, and that's a left click, and it'll give you a forecast. You can right click too and get the same thing by selecting this forecast option. And as you can see, there's a blizzard warning. It tells you when it's available to. You can actually click on that and get the blizzard warning text. And then down here is a kind of a mediogram or a hour by hour graph, which is interactive. You can hover over different parts and it tells you what the temperature is and what your probability of precipitation is, how much snow you're going to get, um, all kinds of different options down here for uh, tallying things up and trying to quickly figure out what's going to happen. There's wind speeds. And then a summary table down here too. There's a wind rose option down here that will look at the direction of the wind and the speed. It's also pretty handy. You can left click and drag for a specific period and it updates this graphic. Uh, again, you can look in that more later. There's a text forecast that is your typical, what you would see on a weather service page for your foreca text forecast. There's a table, and there's also an, a forecast discussion that helps you figure out what the forecasters are thinking. So if you ever want to save the options that you have on the map, and you want to come back to the same exact uh, view with all the layers that you have, you can click on the Save Share button, and that will generate a tiny URL or a GoUSA.URL, and you can just take these and copy those and put them in as a make save them as a bookmark. You can even copy the long one if you want to, or you can share them with anyone else. You can also make a QR code if you're sharing this via mobile devices. And once you go to the link, or to that URL, it'll take you right back to the exact same 
view with the same layers that you left off with last time. So that's an easy way to save the interface. All right, that's all I have for you. Thanks.